Bobby Torres of Fright Box recording here with Tales from an Ex-Gearhead. And today I'm going to be talking about how I went about fixing my terrible sounding guitar tones from earlier on in my recording career. Now, like many others who get into producing metal, guitar tone was a major, major, major pain point for me. And it was even more frustrating for me because I'm a guitar player. I remember dialing in tones that sounded great in the room, that felt great while playing, that just didn't sound right when I'd throw a mic in front of the cab and record my guitars. Muddy, fizzy, harsh, unclear, too bitey. My tones just never sounded right. And whenever I tried to use an amp sim, it was even worse. Super muddy tones, super phasey, strange tones that never fit within the context of a mix. It was a major pain in the ass. Now, I bought myself an SM57 from the get-go. As soon as I got into recording, I knew that SM57s were very popular when micing guitars and drums, so I bought myself an SM57 to use when I produced bands. I knew my room was already dead, so I knew my room wasn't the issue, but no matter where I placed the mic, no matter what heads I used, no matter what guitars I tried, my tones just never sounded right. And like many other engineers, I decided to hit the gear forums to get some advice on how I could achieve better sounding guitars. And by far the most common response I'd get is that I needed a better preamp. In other words, my PreSonus preamps weren't good enough for great guitar tones, supposedly. Now around this time, I was really scouring the internet to see how I could upgrade my preamps because again, I thought preamps were my problem. And thank God I was fortunate enough to be able to work out of a bigger studio where I had access to high-end preamps so I would know just how different they sounded from my preamps. And I gotta say, I was extremely underwhelmed. I'll never forget that day. Got the band in the studio, got their Marshall cab set up in the live room, threw an SM57 up in front of the cab, threw an API preamp, a nice high-end API preamp. I run into the control room. Lo and behold, my tone still sucked. Harsh, phasey, muddy, just not a good guitar tone. Now at this point, I was completely at a loss. I had no idea where to turn or who to ask. I mean, I was working with top-notch gear in a top-notch studio, and my tones still weren't good. Now, around this time, I didn't think much about the actual cab that I was using. I would use whatever the band would bring in, whether it was a crappy Line 6 Spider cab or a Marshall cab with green backs. I just didn't pay much attention to cabs, but I would always pay attention to the head, guitar, mic placement, things like that. Now, I don't remember exactly how, but somehow I came across a few interviews with some bigger metal engineers online. And I noticed all of them were talking about V30 speakers. And at the time, honestly, I didn't even give much thought into what speakers were in cabs. I would just think more about the heads themselves. So what I decided to do was buy myself a secondhand oversized Mesa Boogie cab with V30 speakers. Lo and behold, from the very first recording session, even in my project studio with crappy PreSonus preamps, and by the way, when I say crappy, I just mean not expensive preamps. They're totally transparent. I immediately achieved the guitar tone I was looking for with minimal fuss, even with mic placement. Warm, crisp, fat, clear. The V30 just gave me what I wanted. The V30 in combination with a single SM57 was just the tone I always wanted. And this was a major game changer for me. I realized that the speaker cab and the actual speakers within the speaker cab have a massive, and I mean a massive effect on the tone you're using. Now back then, like many other people, I also thought that amp sims sounded like crap. And it's true, most amp sims sound like crap because most impulse responses sound like crap. It wasn't until I started making my own impulse responses of that cab with that V30 speaker that I was finally happy with my amp sim guitar tones. Because remember, an impulse response is just a snapshot of a particular cab with a particular speaker with a particular mic placement. So back then when I was driving myself crazy looking for some high-end preamp to magically give me the guitar tone I've always wanted, in reality, it just came down to the cab I was using or the impulse response I was using. I get guys in the studio all the time who are aspiring engineers that'll say, oh, I just can't get a decent guitar tone. And I'll ask them, well, what cab are you using? And more often than not, they can't even tell me what speakers are inside the cab that they're using. Pretty much the same situation that I was in way back when. And I find the same to be true with Axe Effects and Kempers. People will tell me, oh, I just can't get a decent tone for my Kemper. What am I doing wrong? All these big bands are using Kempers and they have great tones. And I'll ask them, well, what model and IR are you using? And again, they're not too sure. They just thought that the Axe Effects or Kemper will magically give them a great tone. And it's the exact same thing. So in short, a great guitar tone really comes from using a solid cab 
or a solid impulse response. And on the topic of impulse responses, you could download that exact impulse response that I just mentioned. There's a link below in this video's description. Download the impulse response, load it into your amp sim, and get right to dialing in killer metal guitar tone with absolute ease. So I just wanted to share this little story with you just in case you were in a similar situation to what I was in. Again, back then when I would ask other people in forums, the first thing they would say is that I needed high-end preamps, I needed to use some crazy complicated multi-mic setup, just a bunch of crap that's not true. Just take a listen to productions by Andy Sneap, Jordan Valeriot, some of the heavy hitters in the metal industry, and they all use simple, simple miking setups with just a single SM57 on a V30. If it works for them, I'm sure it'll work for you. So again, do not listen to people in forums, listen to people with real experience. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And again, be sure to download my custom impulse response of my favorite Mesa Boogie Cab with V30 speakers. There's a link below in this video's description. You can download the IR for absolutely free. Till next time, happy recording.